Hi, I'm Mark, and in this video, the second video in a series of videos on the build of our 2013 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Unlimited. If you haven't watched the first video, I suggest you watch it now. It'll really help give you some background as to where we are today, because in this video, we're going to look back objectively and retrospectively at the acquisition of Gizmo and how I came home with the Jeep when I went shopping for Tacoma. If you haven't watched our video, Couples Overlanding Lifestyle, I encourage you to watch it now. It will help you understand my wife Nicole and I better, and that will help you understand how we could come up with a decision like that. As long as I can remember, I've always dreamt of classic overlanding vehicles, such as the FJ45 and the Land Rover Defender 110. It is important to know, though, I never had the Jeep in this class because it was a short wheelbase just like the Defender 90 was and the FJ40. My first off-road vehicle was a Toyota 4Runner SR5 second gen. It was a manual transmission but it had a problem right out of the gate with the synchros in second gear and I had quite a battle with Toyota. They finally changed the transmission but it took six weeks of not having the vehicle. After the transmission thing got sorted out the vehicle performed flawlessly and it was an excellent off-road vehicle. Looking back, I think I never felt the lineage to the older Toyota vehicles such as the FJ45. And I think looking back now, I think it's something I didn't realize at the time, but it had an impact on my decision. It would have probably been early 2010 when Nicole and I seriously started talking about building an overland vehicle and the different ways we would go about doing that. In 2010, the overland community was much smaller. At that time, there were very few resources on YouTube compared to today, and Expedition Overland was certainly up and coming and probably the leader at that time. Watching their videos, following their travels and experiences, it motivated me to get out and take a test drive on the Tacoma. I was pretty impressed. It reminded me tremendously of my 4Runner. It felt like I was in it, except it had more storage. Even though the four-door Jeep, the JK, was introduced in 2007, it was starting to be everywhere in the road and you couldn't really not notice them. It wasn't really something I thought about as a serious overland vehicle. And then I saw this. Mopar, Scott Brady, and AEV collaborated to build this patriarch moment that would influence and open the door for Jeep's entrance into the overlanding community as a serious contender. You'll certainly notice the similarities between Gizmo and this vehicle, inside and out. You'll notice that they have two seats as well, and I think that's more important than you might realize. And of course, the flat floor system. There was just one catch. The 2007 to 2011 model year JKs had a 3.8 engine, and it only had 200 horsepower, and seriously underpowered. Just a bit more information about us. It'll help shed light on our decisions and some of the things that are important to us when we were looking at another vehicle. We don't have any children, so it's just us. This will be my daily driver, not Nicole's. My driving style is not fast or aggressive. Nicole doesn't want to sleep on the ground, so that means we're going to have a rooftop tent. We want to eat healthy and enjoy quality meals when we're on the trail. Nicole loves to cook and is a food blogger. We don't have an unlimited budget for this project. Our main area of exploration and adventure will be North America with a substantial portion in southwestern United States. Nicole and I can both drive a standard, but Nicole would prefer an automatic off-road. We will be traveling by ourselves most of the time, but I will do some solo travel all by myself. And we're looking to buy a new vehicle for reliability. Now let's take a look at the technical aspects of the vehicle we were looking for, either once we purchased a vehicle or once we were done the building cycles. We were looking for front and rear lockers, whether they were air or electric. Ideally, we wanted solid front and rear axles. They were preferred. We were also looking to be able to handle all the gear we needed, but the vehicle to be as small as feasible. We were also looking to have a minimum of 25 degrees approach angle and 25 degrees departure angle. Given where we were going to travel, we would prefer to have 35 inch tires, maybe not initially, but certainly if we didn't have to have any body work, that would be a plus. Because we wanted 35 inch tires, we also felt we would need at least a three inch lift to accommodate that. Also with 33s or 35 inch tires, 
the final gear ratio should be 412 or higher, we felt. A vehicle with about a 110 wheelbase would be ideal. We were hopeful because we were looking at an automatic that hill descent would be an option we could have. We're also looking for a vehicle that would have a good traction control in four wheel eye. The ability to disconnect the front sway bar either automatically or by manual means would be a nice feature. We were hopeful that the vehicle we chose would have good aftermarket accessories available to help us accessorize a vehicle. I wanted the ability to be able to carry a small utility trailer or an overlanding trailer, but not more than 3,500 pounds for sure. Let's take a quick look at the three vehicles we took a good hard look at when deciding which one to purchase. First off was the 2013 Tacoma. It checked off most of the boxes, had a good lineage of reliability and deserved to be at the top of the list for sure. The 2013 Forerunner was definitely on our list as well. It had basically the same carrying capacity, maybe even a little more than the Tacoma, but it couldn't, didn't have the volume the Tacoma had. So it was definitely there because I owned one and I really liked the vehicle and it could do the job for sure. I should mention that we looked at the FJ Cruiser, but the Forerunner just seemed to be a much smarter vehicle for relatively the same price. Up until the 2012 model year, the Jeep Rubicon four-door was not on the list because of the low-powered engine that it had. Jeep, in their wisdom, decided to put the 3.6 Pentastar in there. That gave it 85 more horsepower and a fair bit more torque and at a lower RPM. So it was a good thing. The Mopar build showed us that in a two-person configuration, the Jeep becomes more of a contender for an overland vehicle like this. It has the capability, but that small storage area is a problem and the low weight means it's like a Rubik's Cube to put it all together. There's only so many you can make it work. Having been watching the Jeep since 2010, I had learned a lot about its reliability and it seemed not too bad at all. Given that I had some trouble with the Forerunner, it didn't seem to bother me that it wasn't as known as the Toyotas. Okay, now let's take a look at the decision and how it come together. And how did I end up with the Jeep? Let's take a look. At the time I purchased the vehicles, they were all in and around 34,000, 2013 US dollars. So there wasn't a huge difference between them in price. All three vehicles have advantages and disadvantages. It really comes down to how many people you can take on your overlanding adventures and the gear they need. The only vehicle of the three that can handle three or four people plus all the gear necessary and not pull a trailer is the Tacoma, plain and simple. The Forerunner and the Jeep can't do that effectively. And the Jeep has the lowest payload by several hundred pounds. The 2013 Forerunner would have been by far the best daily driver of the three. The Tacoma would make a good daily driver as well, just a bit noisier on the highway. It should be noted here that there was a Tacoma TRD Pro and I was interested in it, but I couldn't acquire it in Canada. The dealer I was working with also mentioned that in 2014 mid-year, there would be a complete revamp of the TRD Pro line and that would include the Forerunner as well. And as it turned out, the MSRP on the Forerunner TRD Pro was 41,000 and change and the Tacoma TRD Pro was 37,000 and change. The 2013 Jeep had one major advantage. It would have cost me in and around $10,000 to bring the Tacoma and the Forerunner up to the capabilities of the Rubicon. Because both the Forerunner and the Tacoma didn't have off-road capable tires and would have required them before you could really use the vehicle off-road, that would have triggered most of the suspension and drivetrain upgrades. And if you didn't, you'd probably have a higher cost because of duplication down the road. So because the Jeep Rubicon came with 32 inch KM tires and all of the suspension and drivetrain trickets that we wanted, it really allowed us to go to town on the overlanding gear we needed to move way quicker than we wouldn't have done before and a lot cheaper. That $10,000 bought the roof rack, the rooftop tent, the awning, 
the AEV rear bumper system we were going to put on right away, the National Luna fridge freezer, and the Pelican cases with all the gear that we have inside them. So here he is, the day we brought him home. He hasn't his name yet, but soon he was called Gizmo. The only equipment we purchased for the Jeep that year, as far as camping gear, was the ARB Sport chairs. We needed a place to sit down. We brought the Jeep home in early June, and we spent the rest of the summer exploring our part of the world and getting ready to start building first snowfall. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video. In that video, we're going to go through the first stages of build and how we dealt with the weight. We come up with some interesting solutions along the way and I think you'll find them very interesting. If you haven't yet, hit the like button and if you are not subscribed, please go ahead and do that now. You really will help the channel grow.